There are times where it can be really handy to know a cleaning expert. I think it's safe to say now is one of those times and fortunately for you, you do know a cleaning expert, me. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Melissa Maker. I've been in the professional cleaning space for over 13 years. And today I'm gonna to share with you some important information about cleaning and disinfecting and how to stay safe and healthy during cold and flu season. I wanna preface anything that I say by letting you know that my job is to stay in my lane. I will talk about what I know and I will stop where I don't. And at that point, I'm gonna encourage you to check out other websites that have lots of well-researched information about topics that you might be curious about that I can't speak to, such as the CDC, the WHO, and your government health agency. So without further ado, let me get into some cleaning and disinfecting information. I want to start by covering off some words that are used interchangeably, but shouldn't be. Those words are cleaning, sanitizing, and disinfecting. And if you can think of a stoplight, it will help you remember what each of these words mean so that you can use it correctly and you understand what you're hearing. Cleaning, let's call that green. It's easy. We clean to basically take care of our surfaces. We're not worried necessarily about bacteria on the surfaces. It's more about dust and dirt and making sure that they look nice and shiny. Yellow light is sanitizing. Now sanitizing is what we do to kill a certain amount of disease causing microorganisms on a surface and that level is generally set by public health agencies and it's designed to keep you and I healthy and safe when we're out and about which is why often in restaurants or public spaces you'll often see or hear sanitizing or sanitized. Now disinfecting is red. Disinfecting is where the goal is to get rid of all disease causing microorganisms on a surface using a disinfectant, which would either be a chemical or heat or some other type of product or chemical or method to get rid of bacteria. Now there are two types of disinfectants that we can get our hands on. The first hospital grade disinfectants, which clearly are used in hospital settings. The second general disinfectants, which you and I can buy in store. This probably begs the question, when should I clean and when should I disinfect? Let me make it simple for you. When you're at home, just kind of doing your regular cleaning, typically speaking, you don't have to think too much about bacteria. I'm gonna give you the circumstances where you have to, but when you're doing your regular cleaning, a regular cleaner soap and water will do. For those of you that know me, you know I often talk about making my own all-purpose cleaner, two cups of water, a half teaspoon of dish soap, a few drops of essential oils. I constantly have that in rotation at my house, and that's what I use to clean the majority of surfaces in my home on a regular basis. And we're pretty healthy over here, aside from my daughter who's at daycare, in which case we deal with a couple colds here and there. Now the times that we want to focus on disinfecting at home would be as follows. First of all, after meat prep happens, I look over here because my cutting board is over here, any surface that you use, including the sink, cutting boards, knives, anything that you're using to prep meat, you wanna make sure that you're disinfecting afterward. An area where there's a high chance of bacteria being exchanged like a bathroom, that's a really good area to focus on disinfecting on a fairly regular basis. Other times you'd wanna make sure are when people, you either think they're sick or you know they're sick. So when someone's at home or someone comes into your home and there's an illness, it would be those times where you want to break out the disinfectant, as well as if there's someone at home who is either immunocompromised or somebody who might have a chronic health condition, that is another time that you would want to think about making sure that you're disinfecting most, if not all, surfaces in the home because bacteria is not good for their system. For the rest of us, day to day, when everyone's feeling pretty good, regular bacteria that you find at home is good for your system. It helps build up your immunity. But of course, when there's a cold or flu or other virus that comes into play, that's when you wanna amp it up and get out your disinfectant. So now that we know where to disinfect, it's important to know how to disinfect. That way, when the time comes, you'll know that you're doing it properly and correctly. I wanna introduce you to a concept that we in the cleaning world know about, but most people out there don't, and that's called the two-step disinfecting method. And what this means is any surface where we suspect there's bacteria or a microorganism on there that we're concerned about, we have to actually clean that surface first before we apply disinfectant. This is because disinfectants are not designed to clean. They are only designed to go on a search and kill mission and get rid of microorganisms. So 
When you're applying a disinfectant, stop yourself and ask yourself if you've cleaned the surface first. So what does this look like? In the case of meat juice on a counter, you would want to blot it up with a clean paper towel, toss that paper towel, spray the area with a, a general purpose cleaner like soap and water, wipe that away with a paper towel, then you would want to apply the disinfectant. For any other area, say a light switch plate or another point of contact, which again, I will cover off shortly, what you would want to do first is always remove any dirt by using some all-purpose cleaner on a disposable cloth, cleaning that first, then treating the area with the disinfectant second. So always remember, two-step disinfecting method. The next thing you have to know is about dwell time. And again, for those of you who are familiar with the other videos that I make, you've heard about dwell time before. But for those of you who aren't familiar with it, dwell time is essentially the time that a product needs to sit wet on a surface in order to do its job. So in the case of a disinfectant, you have to apply it to the area that you want disinfected. It has to be real wet, nice and glossy. If it dries, it means the product is not doing what you need it to do. And it has to sit there for three to five minutes to literally search and kill the microorganisms, bacteria, what have you on the surface. In TV commercials, we often see spray on wipe off where we just see a quick disposable wipe being wiped and that's that. That is not the way it works. If you read the package instructions, if you go on these disinfectant product websites, you will see that what I am saying is exactly how they tell you to use the product. And just because you're using the product does not mean you're disinfecting. You have to use it properly. On the topic of disinfecting wipes, I think there's a lot of confusion about how to properly use them. I also wanna make very clear baby wipes, makeup remover wipes, do not disinfect. Your wipes have to say that they are disinfectant wipes in order for them to do the job. Now you'll probably notice when you pull a wipe out of the container that they are sopping wet and you want them to be wet because like we've already talked about, if they're dry, they're not going to be able to search and kill bacteria. What you constantly want to do is check in on that surface and make sure that it's wet. So if you're cleaning, let's say a light switch plate, you can wipe it down with the wipe. And then as soon as you notice it getting dry, you've got to do it again. I know this is annoying. This is the way that they work. Now that you know how to disinfect, let's talk about where to disinfect at home. So the first thing you want to focus on are points of contact, anything that you are touching, anyone else is touching, and that's a surface that is constantly being touched where bacteria can be exchanged. Anything like doorknobs, light switch plates, keypads for locks or alarms, faucet handles, toilet flushers. So again, anything that we are constantly touching. Electronics are another area of consideration. Whether it's a keyboard, a mouse, a remote control, phone, tablet, or anything in between, we are constantly touching them and they need to be attended to. Now, interestingly, Apple just updated their website where they mentioned that you can now use a 70% rubbing alcohol wipe on any of, hard, any of their hard display surfaces, so hard non-porous display surfaces, or a disinfecting wipe. So just remember what we talked about earlier and you can now use that. I would also recommend cases and backs of electronics as well. A lot of us don't remember to do that, but make sure that you pay attention to those. Bathrooms, I covered this off before, but just remember bathrooms, both hard and soft surfaces, being rugs, shower curtains, towels, those are all things that can easily pick up bacteria. So when you think about disinfecting, you really wanna think about all hard surfaces in the bathroom where there could have been something that has traveled and soft surfaces can be laundered. Now, speaking of laundry, if you have a washing machine that has a sanitized cycle, meaning it puts super hot water into the load, that's a great way to kill bacteria. In clothing, you know, we're coughing into our sleeve, we're sweating in our sheets, we're constantly washing our hands. So clothing, bedding, towels, all important things to make sure that you're laundering. Now you can use chlorine bleach if the laundry in the laundry if you're comfortable with doing that. You can also add a cup of hydrogen peroxide or a scoop of oxygen bleach powder. Neither of those are registered disinfectants, but they will help to kill bacteria in the laundry as well. So just keep all of that stuff in mind when you are laundering your clothing. Now steam I mentioned earlier is a great way to kill bacteria. I'm gonna quickly explain to you why that is. If your steam cleaner can get up to 212 degrees Fahrenheit at the tip, meaning at the point where the steam blasts out of the machine, it will kill bacteria pretty much on contact. You can use a steam cleaner on hard surfaces like counters or soft surfaces 
like pillows and upholstery and blankets. So they really are terrific and handy to have around the house. They're a bit of an upfront investment, but once you have them, oftentimes they'll double as a garment steamer and they really come in handy, especially in times like this. And especially if you're someone who doesn't like bringing too much product into their home. And if you guys are interested, let me know in the comments down below. Maybe I'll put a separate video together on how to use a steam cleaner. We also have a video up on how to make your own DIY hand sanitizer following the latest recommendations. So I'll link that for you down below. And I'll also let you know that we have some other pertinent links for you to check out. We have a healthy cleaning playlist on our YouTube channel, so you can check that out. And we'll also put links to the CDC and the W WHO down there so that you can get the most up-to-date and current information. I just want to tell you that everything I'm sharing is up-to-date and current as of today and I will do my best to update you if anything should change. In the meantime, I ask you to stay safe and stay healthy, look out for one another, we will get through this together. Why am I getting emotional? I'll see you next time. Thank you.